Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. As always, we have an action-packed show lined up for you today. So firstly, we are on our travels looking at the first ever Grob fifth axis installation in Scotland at CA Models. And I think MTD had quite a bit to do with this. We then visit RoboJob HQ in Belgium discussing the reasons why you can automate your Th three axes and fifth axis machines and the increased justification for automating your lower volume work. From there, we look at automating inspection with GOM. And finally, Paul and I discuss the pros and cons of linear and box guideways. And we're going to have a bit of discussion about that in the studio. And that's at Ward High Tech. So welcome to this week's Wharf and Chips. Well, guys, another exclusive. I'm here with Lewis Hill, who's the managing director of Grob UK. Last week, he took me to the first customer in Southern Ireland to take delivery of two Grobs. Now he's brought me to CA Models in Stirling, which have got this fantastic G550 turning and milling application, and it's the first machine in Scotland. Oh, what a journey. You know, two weeks, and you're taking me to two other parts of the UK, and obviously Ireland as well. The crops are fantastic, you're doing well. Yeah, Mark, the name seems to be getting out into the market now. We're, we're pushing into markets and areas that we've not been before, and we can only see that uh, increasing over the years and over the months. And also, with aerospace really key in, into the UK and Ireland as well, I, I, I presume where your machines really work very well is the harder materials, and I presume that's where you're selling, really. Yes, harder materials, high-volume aluminium removal, milling, turning applications, but also here at CAA Models, it's a, a job shop, basically, a fast make model shop. Uh, they don't know what's coming through the door day one to day two. So the flexibility of the G550T gives them, gives them many opportunities on many materials, aluminiums, hard metals, milling, turning, full five axis applications, basically. And I think there's a common theme, isn't there, is that CA Models, as I understand, watch some of the videos that we produced in Mindelheim at your factory in Germany, uh, convinced them to look at you, you took them over to the factory, and that's why you ended up with this order. So we have helped, really. Yeah, thankfully, Mark, you got the first hook to uh, CA Models. They made the phone call. The uh, relationship progressed. We took them to Mindelheim. We did um, a full factory tour, uh, and then we managed to, to, to secure the deal with them in Mindelheim. And, and lastly, you've got five places up for grabs for engineers that might want to come to your open house in Mindelheim. Yeah, obviously the, the, the invites to everybody, but the first five uh, people that contact us that aren't existing customers, uh, we would like to take them fully expense to Mindelheim to see the facility in Grob. And the dates are? It's the 18th to the 21st of March. Thanks, Lewis. Well, there you go. Another exclusive in Stirling, Scotland. What a fantastic video, Mark. There's a bit more of a backstory here, though, isn't there? Yeah, well, these guys uh, don't really know what jobs they're going to get in from week to week. So it's really sort of one-off um, you know, applications they've got, different types of materials. So uh, the MD actually watched one of our YouTube videos when he was looking for new uh, uh, machines to consider, let's say, and um, basically went to Grob, spoken to them, and I think they've probably bought a, a much bigger and better machine than probably what they were looking at. So they kind of invited us up to uh, review it, obviously, with Lewis. And, you know, uh, you know, first machine in Scotland. They've got more machines going into Scotland. The week before I was in, um, in, in Southern Ireland, mm. you know, two machines there. Those guys are going from what they know very well in the automotive sector and putting it straight into the aerospace sector and doing really well. And you've ha been key to that as well. Well, we have. We're a team, aren't mm. we? And at the end of the day, you know, our channels are, are very key to the success of our customers as well. Okay. I think, I think from a machine tool perspective, mm. I mean, that, that, that turning capability on a fifth axis machine, I mean, we, we've seen more and more of these fifth axis machines with an horizontal spindle. Yeah. But then to also have that, that turning capability for a model maker uh, such as yeah. CA models is, is fantastic isn't it? overhead it's a, it's a game machining, changer swore falling away you've got options from 12,000 rpm spindles up to 30,000 you know they, they're really really bespoke but and what a lot of engineers may not know is they're very cost effective and competitive 
There you go. They're certainly reaching out into more of a mass marketplace now, aren't they, the Grab? Yeah. They're, they were well yeah. associated and renowned for the automated, yeah. uh, well, automation industry. Yeah. And when you go to the factory in Mindelheim in Germany, you've not seen anything as big. It's, it's the biggest uh, manufacturing of machine tools in one space in Europe. It's, it's incredible. It's, um, it really, really is. Welcome to the show as well. We didn't really do a formal <laughs> introduction, Mark and Gio. Uh, another great story as well not only mtd but mtd network um have just helped with ferocity winning a contract worth two hundred and thirty thousand pounds yeah we've been we've been visiting ferocity over the last few years they've invested in lots of state-of-the-art machinery fifth axis machinery and they've just won a, a big contract for a, a big uh, aerospace blade component fifth axis work you know it's the 230,000 mm pounds -hmm. uh, but what what a fantastic result and that day we'd done a little bit of a road trip with the network and we went to the next company and they'd just won one for £12,000. So if you want to start winning this kind of work, get onto the MTD network. Definitely, I like you know, it. Good, good uh, plug there, Gio, I like it's, it. It's working. Yeah, it is. All right, next up, we look at automated solutions from RoboJob in Belgium. We talk on Swarf and Chips a lot about automation. We're here in, uh, in Belgium, just outside Brussels at RoboJobs factory, supplied in the UK by Hydrofeed. Now the question is, that I'm gonna to put to you, Gio, and obviously back to the audience, is why would you automate a three or a five axis machine like they're simulating here? I think the question should be, why wouldn't you really, Paul? I think if you're doing low volume work or high volume work, automation is certainly the key now. If you want to become more profitable and get maximum output out of your machine and less downtime. So effectively, you can be running your machine 24-7 for low volume or high volume work, which has been proven here in Belgium um, this week this week. Um, also, you're creating better jobs. So you're re removing an operator and giving him the opportunity to do more creative tasks. Upskilling is a big thing and changing the perception of engineering for the younger talent to come into the industry. Now we're going to talk about this now in more detail back in the studio. We'd like to know exactly what you think about automation and whether you would automate uh, a three axis and a five axis machine and if so, why? You had a great trip going to Belgium, didn't it you? It was spot on. Yeah. It was absolutely brilliant. And how was the beer? The beer was strong. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be fair, you could have popped in for a cup of tea at my house because obviously I'm near the Channel Tunnel. Yeah. But yeah. you didn't fly. I missed the fly. <laughs> missed all these winds that we're having yeah. at the minute. There yeah. You You're flying it later today. Oh, I am. Um, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, flying at supersonic speed. I would have yeah, thought. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, right. I went to a company, JKP, which we're going to be talking to um, or seeing a video on later. Not every company can automate. Their work doesn't work with automation but that is maybe something that needs to be changed i think maybe it can you know really? when you do yeah when you're doing low volume prototype work you can palletize it so effectively if you don't know what's coming through the door from one day to the next by having a pallet kind of system that goes into your machine effectively all you're doing is setting the work outside the machine and then scheduling that new component yeah. to be in the machine when it's right. ready yeah. so Yes and no. You know, I, I think that you know there's a misconception that I'm doing low low volume work, one off work. I can't automate, but the people that are automating that kind of work are the ones that are making the most money because there's more money in low volume work than there is high volume. Work. It's also about education as well because I, I think every engineer probably thinks, okay, I'm doing it the right way, but yeah. actually there could be other or better options and I think that's what automation actually when we look at automation there's so many variants these days mm. so therefore how, how would you know that that's the right that's the right way yeah but yeah, I think that a big point is is that as well you know when we went to robo job some of these technologies were for free axis and fifth axis machines something that's not really been automated in the UK in Europe and around the world more so and um, the density of automation is a lot higher but when we look at these kind of um solutions it really kind of illustrates the kind of return of investments that are available and to make a company more profitable so the key basically is or uh, you know education education on automated uh, automation um i'll get that right right so if you're automating your machine tool why not automate inspection too so let's look at this solution from gom today i'm investigating metrology solutions from gom now what are we showcasing here behind you? So what we've got over here is the GOM CT machine. So CT is quite a new instrument for GOM, uh, released last year. So we've taken our know-how from the other optical metrology systems 
and our focus on dimensional inspection and integrated that into the CT. So we've, there's a few things in terms of calibration where it differs from some of the other CTs on the market. So we're looking at creating very high accuracy scan data, generally for, for plastic parts on this machine. I see that it mentions fifth axis kinematics. Can you explain what this means? Yeah. So often with, with this machine, we're looking at very small parts. And um, one, one thing could be that we position them in a bad way. Um, with the best intentions. So the five, fifth axis kinematics will allow, allow the, the, the system to automatically position the part in the optimum position. Perfect. Now, moving on to this cell here, this is very interesting. Automation is on the tip of everybody's tongue at sure. the minute, but you're automating metrology effectively with a scanning head. Can you tell me how this demonstration works? Exactly that. So. We've been automating the scanners for a long time and some of the ways that the scanners work, we don't have to take any accuracy from the robot. So we can maintain high accuracy through the same way as we've been scanning for 20 or 30 years. What we can do now, not just automating it, but making it very easy to teach as well. So we can literally drag in the CAD file and maybe a, a little text file for the inspection points. And pretty much from there on, the, the user, all they need to do is focus on the inspection. The system will automatically generate all of the required scan points for them. How long would it take to scan a component such as that? So for a very high detail scan of a part like that, we're talking less than five minutes. And, but probably more importantly, the, scan to, the, the, the time to actually teach those scan positions can be 30 seconds to a minute now. Kevin, thank you very much. Thank you. So there you go. GOM Metrology. You need to look out for this equipment. Geo Fifth Axis Kinematics Scanning. Does it, where does it end? It's brilliant, isn't it, really? <laughs> yeah. I think the inspection is just as important as the manufacturing of a part. So if people are investing hundreds of thousands in the latest machine tools um, and making components faster, they need to inspect them just mm. as fast or you'll get a backlog. Mm. What do you think, Mark? Well, yeah. in process measurement is is very key. Like you say, you could have the best machine tool, best software in the world, but at the end of the day, you want to try and keep that part there mm. and actually basically coming off finished. Yeah. And I think that's the key with companies like GOM, where they've got a very sophisticated scanning software, giving the engineer the you know the core values of where that is and what he needs to do with it, it is is the way forward, which saves you money. Yeah, definitely. I learned a lot when I went to Mitutoyo as well. You know, having having the inspection equipment on the shop floor is key now. So as close to yeah. the machine tool as, as physically possible. Mm. I think I think measure, me measurement and inspection is getting a lot closer mm. to to where probably engineers think. Well, it's all about machine tool. Yes. It's yeah. part of the complete process. Mm, yeah. Definitely. Right, finally, we find out, we're going to have a debate in the studio here about the differences between your linear and box guideways, and we really would love for you to get involved in this too. Yes, so Paul, what is the difference between a box guideway and a linear guideway? Okay, now this is a box guideway machine. This is a DALI vertical machining centre. Now you'll see here, this is a box section, one of two, and this is actually machined into the bed of the machine. So it is an integral part of, it is the casting that has basically been machined. Now this on this machine is on the X and the Y axis and probably the Z2, in fact it is on the Z, but some machines will have uh, a linear system on the Z and maybe an X and Y box section. The key, the key difference and the key benefit to the box is the fact that if you are trying to do heavier, heavier machining, if you've got heavier components, harder materials, deeper cuts, deeper cuts all of that will, will, vibration will resonate through the machine. And by having a box guideway construction, it will dampen out that vibration, which means you will potentially get better surface finishes. Uh, the machine will probably last longer because you can imagine if a car's rattling around, it's going to, mm -hmm. you know. Well, it's, technically, there's less parts, isn't there, it, as it's built into the casting. Right. And there's going to be more wear on a machine if there is vibration. Um, so that's really the, the, the box guideway section. The linear rails, some would argue, and they'd be right to say that a linear rail machine can be faster. Uh, and there are different methods of machining these days. So interpolating can get, you know, great results on accuracies and surface finishes. But I know we're going to take this up back in the studio, so it'll be interesting interesting to see uh, what we have to say or the guys have to say back there but that's it from that's my take on it anyway
I personally think we may open a small can of worms here because there's going to be a lot of different perspectives on your box guideways, your linear guideways. We would love for you to put in the comment sections below all of what you think, your preferred uh, method and your pros and cons. I mean, you guys, we walk away, we know kind of what we're going to discuss in the shows and I've done my research and, you know, I've got some people saying in my, appear- uh, in my, uh, in my experience, linear ways require more maintenance than a box ways. However, linear ways are easier to service and recondition in the field. Your thoughts, gents? I thought it was a good video. Yeah. Uh, I thought <laughs> okay. it's, a, it's an excellent video and it stirs up a debate. I yeah. think it's uh, budget it comes into play as well. I think through my own experience over the years, the cutting tool strategies have changed and subsequently Certainly, the ways yeah. and, and the machines that you need to machine a certain component um, is 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 about that really. So if you're looking to machines at aluminiums um, in a fast way, then a linear is best. If you're looking to a machine uh, <laughs> harder oh, materials, where it's harder happen. materials, like depth, yeah. uh, you know. But depth, I, yeah, depth of cut. I, I've been on a couple of forums actually, yeah, just looking same. at this, and I and I, I looked at uh, you know the box guideways. You know the the negative side that could they be slower. The cost of them, mm. the accuracy. That was where I got service as well. Yeah, and it, you think to yourself, well, that's one application, but it just depends what materials. You look You look at linear, for instance, you know, they're saying that maybe, you know, uh, less harder metals like the aluminiums are, are better, for instance. The accuracy is better and they're faster. So therefore, cost versus speed versus... Application. It's application. That's what it's all about. And it's also yeah. not just about the application that you've got, of course. It's going to be about future applications mm-hmm. as well. You've got to consider that on your machine. What type of work are you going to be putting on there? If you need that horsepower and you're machining um, exotic hard materials and you want longevity in your machine tool and you need mm-hmm. to be taking that uh, deep depth of cut, you probably need box guideways. If, yeah. you, if you know what your machine day to day, you can kind of cherry pick the machine that suits your application. If you don't know, maybe you need to future-proof yourself. Yeah. Or get two. <laughs> yeah. Or get both. <laughs> there you go, there's the option. Look, we would love for you to put all of your messages, your comments, what you prefer, what are the pros and cons, and we'll start maybe a little bit of a debate on it in the comments box below. Right, that's it for this week's Wolf & Chips show. So thank you very much, gents. Don't forget, we've got our podcast every Monday and our question time on the last Monday of every single month. Uh, please comment, like, and subscribe to all of our channels. Throughout the show, you've heard some of the successes we have been having. Um, So do get in church. And as we always say at the end of every single show, keep Keep those those spindles spindles turning. turning.